Good morning, everyone, um, for this distinguished webinar series in AI and cybersecurity. Uh, today with us and uh, Dr. Cliff Zhou, um, Professor, Department of Computer Science, and also an IEEE senior member from University of Central Florida. Dr. Zhou received his PhD degree from Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering from University of Massachusetts at Amherst in 2005, and then moved to University of Central Florida to become an assistant professor. He is a full professor in the Department of Computer Science, the program coordinator of both the master's degree in digital forensics and master's in cybersecurity and privacy at UCF. His research interests focus on cybersecurity and privacy, cyber education, and computer networking. His academic publications have obtained more than 8,100 Google Scholar citations. He is a senior member of IEEE. Dr. Cliff, it's uh, so honored to have you as part of this uh, webinar series at UND. Thank you so much for agreeing uh, to give this talk to us. And uh, uh, the floor is yours, and uh, you can share your screen. OK, thank you very much for inviting me for this talk, to give this talk. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, oh, uh, you, you need to unshare your screen first. Okay. Yeah, we can see. It's not in full screen. Oh, there you go. go. Okay. Yes. Hi. Uh, so today I'm going to give a brief introduction of some of our research group's research on the, on the cybersecurity topic in, in related to networking, because my, my original research is on networking. So so my cybersecurity research focus is mainly on networking protocol, networking uh, communication part of the cybersecurity issues. Um, so these are just uh, because of the time, I will uh, introduce some examples that uh, they are not very hard to explain that so you can understand it uh, fairly easily. And uh, they are uh, and also a topic that could be interesting and very related to the real world uh, uh, applications. So, so, so these are the outline for the research topic that I'm going to introduce uh, in this talk. Uh, first is uh, for the profiling attack. Uh, it's basically the privacy attack on Internet of Things. Uh, based on their encrypted Wi-Fi traffic, even though uh, the, mo the majority of Internet of Things, especially in home, home field, uh, in consumer market, they are based on Wi-Fi. And uh, even though Wi-Fi is encrypted, but we can, attacker can pretty easily to profile, to understand what IoT device you have used in your residential or business area. Uh, second one is uh, related to Wi-Fi. Security is about, we developed uh, some um, uh, virtual wireless client techniques that can mimic, that can emulate a uh, Wi-Fi device. And uh, it has, this technique has its good use and also bad use by attackers as well. So we will explain uh, some examples. Uh, the third one is on fake news defense. Uh, this for disinformation. Um, we introduce uh, an idea that we try to build a, build a certification and verification channel to bridge a gap between the news organization and the and the consumers. So we are now trying to to use our method to determine whether this news is a fake news or true news. Uh, uh, many research have done done research in that aspect. But we are trying to, to contribute in this uh, field from a different angle, just to provide this uh, communication channel between news organization and consumers. Uh, the first and the fifth <clears throat> is about uh, credit card fraud uh, defense. <clears throat> first is about uh, credit card fraud detection um, based on DNS systems. Um, the second is uh, how do we defend against credit card uh, fraud uh, using uh, card transaction features that we can actually build in the real world uh, uh, e-merchant. Uh, last, we will, I'm going to introduce is about uh, 
is again based is about a pro proper uh, profiling attack or privacy attack uh, for this automatic phone service used by many business. Uh, when we call any custom service phone number, uh, it will be served by this automatic computer-based uh, phone system. We found that uh, it is vulnerable to this uh, profiling attack. So that's the uh, topic I'm going to introduce in this talk. Um, so first is the IoT device uh, attack. Uh, in, in, in consumer market, like uh, we have we have a lot of IoT device at home, like a smart speaker, like uh, our cell phone is also, it's not an IoT device, but it's a Wi-Fi device at home. Uh, we have a smart TV and uh, like a air conditioner thermostat and a Wi-Fi camera, a security camera. So there are many, many different IoT device used at home. Uh, and uh, even though they are using encrypted uh, Wi-Fi traffic because home Wi-Fi is encrypted, uh, we usually think that they are safe, but actually it's not. Uh, this is because every IoT device, they have very distinct traffic pattern because like a smart plug, just a serve uh, is those kind of uh, uh, type of service. So because of its unique service, its traffic to the internet is very, it has its di distinct features. Um, so based on that distinct traffic patterns, attacker can figure out what IoT device are, uh, are in your home. And uh, like uh, whether you have a smart TV or whether you have a Wi-Fi security camera or whether you have a, a Wi-Fi based baby monitor, baby monitor, Wi-Fi baby monitor is very popular. And in addition, they can understand whether they are working or not. And even the brand of this IoT device, they will be able to understand just based on this. Uh, uh, we call it out of network eavesdropping because attacker doesn't need to understand, doesn't need to join in your Wi Fi network. They just uh, monitoring on the encrypted Wi Fi traffic and they can figure this out. Uh, our experiment showed that with just the 30 seconds of this monitoring, we can figure out all this information in a, in a Wi-Fi area. Um, basically, we observed the, we call it out of, out of network Wi-Fi traffic. Uh, so what we observe is just the encrypted Wi-Fi frame going through this uh, Wi-Fi channel. And uh, what we can observe is just the, the frame length and also MAC layer header. So the source MAC address, destination MAC address, those are known. And, and also time of the frame. So when we do this profiling, we basically use machine learning algorithm uh, to, to do the classification. So these are the features we try to use to build this pattern, like a flow-based feature, like a in a time interval, for example, in one minute or five minutes time interval, how many packets has been sent or received by that IoT device? How many bytes has been sent and received in that time window? And uh, what, how many different uh, packet size in the send and received traffic? Some device, they have, they generate diverse lengths of packet. Some device, they generate only a few different sizes of uh, packets. Uh, and average number of consecu consecutive send and receive packet uh, before, before it receive a response from the other end. Uh, so time-based uh, feature like uh, the inter-arrival time is very important feature. And uh, packet size uh, based feature is the maximum length in the send and receive packet and most appeared lens in the send receive packet. So based on these features, we can build this profile for each IoT device. Um, uh, so, and, and then use machine learning algorithm. You can use any machine learning. Uh, what we use in our study is random forest. You can use AI deep, deep learning algorithm as well. Uh, this is a, a classification result by using random forest uh, machine learning algorithm. Uh, you can see that for these IoT device, uh, 
we achieve almost 100% accuracy in, in classifying, to identify that, uh, that device. And even the sta status, like a camera off, camera on, we can easily uh, determine that, like uh, whether the TV, smart TV is idle, whether the TV, uh, smart TV is the streaming videos, uh, whether laptop is idle, laptop is busy in transferring uh, things. And uh, there are some uh, misclassification, but not that big, uh, uh, like uh, uh, this, uh, this smart speaker has some issues, but we can still identify this device. It's just uh, identifying the working status uh, take a little bit time. Uh, have some accuracy issues. Okay, so that's a that's an attack. Um, attacker can can do this uh, secretly because they only need to passively monitor in the Wi-Fi. So user will have no way to know that someone is monitoring their, their Wi-Fi signals. Um, how do how do we defend against uh, such kind of profiling attack? Uh, we have developed several methods. Uh, one of the methods uh, is um, basically try to try to remove the the pattern from from this uh, uh, Wi-Fi frame traffic. So, uh, uh, like uh, uh, originally, this is the Wi-Fi frame frame series from that IoT device. It's a, it has its distinct features, patterns that can be clearly identified. However, if the IoT device use way, like uh, uh, we, we call it a uh, uh, fragmentation way, to split, randomly split a uh, uh, large size of a frame into a smaller frame to send out, like uh, this is original traffic. If the IoT device can send this data in this series of frame uh, one time, and next time can send this uh, data in this series of frame. So basically break out the data section and uh, make this packet sent out have random size. And also you could have, you could increase or decrease the number of uh, packets to send out. In this way, we can, uh, we can confuse the, the attacker. So attacker will have low accuracy in identifying the IoT device. Uh, the basic idea, <clears throat> The advantage is that it generates very little overhead. We only add overhead on the TCP or IP packet header. So that's the only overhead. We don't add any noise data uh, 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 into this uh, traffic. Um, the basic uh, idea to implement this, uh, uh, how can we control the packet size when we send it out, is basically uh, uh, in the TCP socket programming, we disable this uh, Nagos algorithm. This is algorithm is by TCP IP socket program by the OS, which can combine smaller data into a bigger packet to send out. We try to disable that uh, function and also use this uh, option to make sure that the, the, the open system does not delay uh, sending out a packet, even though it only receives limited amount of bytes. Uh, so with these uh, two uh, measures, we can control the packet we send out uh, by the application layers uh, uh, program. So we don't need to, to change the OS. We can we still use the original OS, but we just uh, make this change uh, so, so that we have the control. Uh, so that's the basic idea for this defense. And uh, Another defense is that we can generate this uh, so-called virtual wireless client. Uh, basically, we use based on this uh, open source uh, packet injection library, uh, we will be able to uh, to let, uh, for example, uh, we, we generate a program on Linux machine so that one Linux machine can emulate like 10 Wi-Fi device, 10 interface, Wi-Fi interface. And each interface has its own MAC address. So for, for the access point or for attackers eavesdropper, they observe that this traffic generated by this single Linux computer, it seems it coming from 10 different uh, Wi-Fi devices. So we call it virtual wireless client techniques. Uh, 
the the good use for these virtual wireless client techniques is that uh, we can let each IoT device to send out its traffic through like a two or three virtual wireless client. So for attacker, it's like uh, it's like this traffic is generated by two or three different IoT device. So that will diffuse this traffic pattern and make it much harder for a attacker to do this profiling attack. And uh, there's no need to change Wi-Fi inf infrastructure. It just need update on the client side uh, software. Um, of course, this technique can be used uh, in uh, from the attacker's aspect as well. Like one. Uh, one use for these techniques is uh, like attacker can speed up their password guessing attack. Like uh, for well, we, we use Wi-Fi as one example, but this is uh, generally speaking uh, uh, for like uh, for Wi-Fi's uh, uh, WPA uh, uh, authentication, you have a username password. If attackers do online password cracking, they can only try like a five, six password per minute. But if attacker uses a virtual wireless client, attacker can generate 20 or 30 virtual wireless client. Each virtual wireless client try one password with this, uh, with this WPA uh, authentication server. So our experiment show that with this virtual wireless client, we can speed up a password guessing speed by 100 times for this uh, uh, pre-shared key authentication. For enterprise authentication, we can speed it up uh, by 17%. Uh, Enterprise-based authentication just means you need to put username and password. Uh, pre-shared key, PSK, pre-shared key authentication is mainly the home Wi-Fi uh, authentication method. Basically, a home Wi-Fi, you only have a single password to, to log in. Um, and another possible use for these uh, techniques, well, it's hard to say whether it's good or bad, is that it can circumvent this uh, traffic limitation implemented by ISP. Like when you go to a hotspot, like when you go to a hotel, uh, you have a free Wi-Fi service, but if you pay some fee, you can get premium Wi-Fi service. Uh, that is because the free Wi-Fi service is uh, has a rate limitation. But if you implement this uh, virtual wireless client, you can you can have concurrent connection to the uh, Wi-Fi access point. So each connection will have the will have that upper speed limit. So our testing showed that we can speed up like 16 times in file transfer when we connect to a rate limited uh, uh, free hotspot. Okay, um, so we, we changed the topic. Uh, this one is about uh, 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 fake news defense. Uh, we try to build a infra, Wi -Fi infra, web, web infrastructure uh, for authentication uh, multimedia content for fake news defense. Uh, because we think that there are already many research on how we can determine whether a news piece or whether an image or video is uh, fake or not, whether an image or video has been edited or not. Uh, people have done that kind of research. But we think that uh, for fake news defense, actually, it's uh, much more complicated. It's not a pure technical uh, problem. Uh, so, so instead of doing this uh, technical aspect of determining whether a news piece is a true news or fake news, uh, we try to provide uh, an easy to deploy communication channel to pass on the reputable organization's endorsement to end consumers. Like uh, if a news piece has been endorsed and certified by a news organization, for example, CNN News have certified one piece of a news article or one piece of image news. And uh, we try to provide this channel such that the end consumer, like when we browse the web, 
we can tell whether this news piece or whether this image has been certified by which news organization. Then whether you trust this news organization or not, it depends on different consumers. Like uh, maybe some consumer, they trust uh, the news from CNN, but they do not trust the news from Fox News. So that's to to totally up to the end consumer. What we provide is just uh, this, uh, uh, this endorsement that we can pass on to the end consumer. So we developed a browser plugin. A consumer can install this browser plugin on their, on their browser. And this browser plugin will, can tell whether this news piece has been endorsed by any news organization or not. Um, so the basic idea is very simple. It's a, we just use the public PKI. So news organization will, will digitally sign a news piece. And uh, our broader plugin will show whether this news piece has been digitally signed by which news organization. So the technical part is not that difficult. Um, so once an, some news organization, like a CNN news organization, believe a news piece, in our research, we use image as an example, but you can use a, quote, a full article or a video. Uh, uh, any news piece is fine. We, we use image as example. If they believe this image is true, they will digitally sign this news with its private key. Uh, every news organization has their digital certificate. Right? So these, uh, these uh, information will put in a XMP file, will associate with that image news. Uh, then it can be published by CNN or it can be published by any other website. In the client side, in the consumer side, the browser has the plugin. The plugin can verify the associated XMP file and with this uh, image and to, to, to show, to verify whether this image has been digitally signed or not. If the image has been modified, then the image cannot be verified with a digital signature. The browser plugin will add uh, this uh, red a uh, borderline around that image. Just tell the end user that this image is not certified, has been modified from the certification. If a, an image has been certified and uh, has not been changed, has not been modified, it will have this uh, green borderline around that image. And if a user, if the consumer move their mouse, click this uh, green shield, uh, this pop-up menu will show up. Basically, this is uh, the certification by which organization and some basic information about image, like uh, when this image was taken, and the brief, brief uh, description of this image is also show up uh, in, in this pop-up window. Um, so that's the basic implementation for us to pass on this uh, endorsement from news organization to the end consumer. So that's the basic idea. Okay, uh, so that's the fake news defense. We have developed that techniques. Um, for, for the online credit card uh, fraud uh, uh, detection defense, uh, uh, we have done multiple research. We will introduce two of them here. One is, how do we detect uh, fraud transaction is, uh, is based on DNS uh, system because many, many fraudsters, when they try a stolen credit card, for example, buy something from an e-merchant from, from Amazon, they will go through a proxy. Uh, they will most likely go through a proxy to connect to, to the e-commerce website. Because, because they are stolen credit card, for example, some attacker from, uh, from a, another country stole, uh, steal a credit card belonging to a user in Florida, then that uh, attacker will use a proxy in Florida to, to initiate this uh, transaction. It, that it looks like uh, it is a con consumer from Florida using a Florida's credit card. Um, but if the e-commerce website implement this technique, it's called this disposable DNS 
on their checkout page. Basically, every checkout page it will embed a dynamically generated unique host name on the checkout uh, transaction page. Then when the attacker's uh, browser uh, uh, load this uh, checkout page and, uh, and try to query for that uh, unique host name, this query, because this is the unique host name, so this query will eventually sent by the local DNS, per, local DNS uh, server to the authority DNS server belonging to the e-commerce uh, organization. Then, uh, so th this is the basic illustration. So the client will access this uh, checkout page. This checkout page has a unique host name in it. So this is a random uh, name uh, put in the host name. The random name is already uh, is generated by the checkout uh, server. It identifies this uh, this uh, this name with this uh, spe uh, this uh, specific transaction. When the client uh, issue DNS request, this the DNS request will go eventually go to the authority DNS server. The authority DNS server will know that this special keyword has been queried. Then it will send uh, the IP address for the local DNS server belonging to the client to the checkout page uh, uh, to the e-commerce server. So e-commerce server can use it to identify what's the IP address and geolocation for that local DNS server. So this is one way to uh, try to tell whether a user have basically uh, lied about his uh, his source, his location or not in this uh, transaction. So this is one way to, de to detect many of those kind of uh, uh, credit card usage, stolen credit card usage. Uh, there, there are some other, other techniques we have developed, but this one is uh, easy to explain one. Um, and um, so through, uh, we have collaboration with a real e-commerce, uh, uh, e-commerce. E so uh, this is like a small, small business. Uh, they are doing some online, uh, on, uh, online business. So we have collaboration with them. We implement this in their website. Uh, we find that if, a, if, if we find the client IP address is equal to its local DNS server's IP address, it's 100% that this is a fraud because normally a client, a normal user, his IP address is surely be different from the local DNS servers. And, uh, and if the so same subnet, different DNS, it also has very high percentage that uh, it's belong to a fraud. If the IP address and the lo local DNS server, they share the same subnet, it's also 100% to be fraud, to be, to be uh, fraud transactions. Um, so this is uh, the evaluation based on the real world transaction data. So it can actually catch many of those uh, fraud transactions. And, um, and uh, another research we do we done on, on, on this field is that so suppose the e-commerce has suspect that this transaction is fraud, like uh, using this way or some other way, we detect that one transaction may be, may be generated by, by the attacker, but we are not 100% sure. Then how do we make sure that this is a fraud transaction or make sure that this is, well, just a normal user's transactions just uh, be falsely uh, uh, identified by those uh, anomaly detection method. So, so this is called the verification, uh, the last step in the defense. If we suspect that a transaction is a fraud, uh, we use this way to verify uh, that transaction. Because for any credit card, debit card transaction, it actually, the e-commerce will actually need to contact the, the credit card issuer twice. The first time is authorization, verify the card, whether this card is valid or not. The second time uh, contact is actually post the charge on that credit card. So, so 
So there are two steps for, for card transaction by the e-commerce. Uh, 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 e so how, how do we use that? Basically, suppose this uh, for this uh, transaction, we, we suspect that this uh, card holder may be an attacker. Then we when we issue this uh, authorization, the first step authorization, we will add some unique number in that description. So this is uh, this is called a transaction description. Like when you check your credit card statement, you can see every transaction they have some very simple information like uh, from which organization, uh, zip code or something. So that's the that's a dis description. Uh, the the e-commerce can add this uh, description number in this uh, authorization steps. Then ask the user, ask the card holder to check his uh, credit card, uh, 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 check his online statement uh, to find out what's the what's the actual number in this uh, descriptor because this will show up on the credit card um, uh, uh, online credit card account immediately. Then if the if the card holder held this number back to the e-commerce correctly, then this is a real card holder because he, he can check his uh, credit card online statement. If this card holder is attacker, attacker don't have access to the actual credit card online, online account, online statement, then the attacker cannot provide this uh, unique number correctly back to the e-commerce. So this is a way for the e-commerce to verify whether this card holder is real card holder or the attackers. So, so uh, this is a basic idea uh, to uh, to do it. Of course, when we when we do this, we add uh, the e-commerce cannot do this very frequently. E-commerce only do it for any any card holder that is uh, suspect suspicious to be attackers. Uh, so, uh, so e-commerce can can do this uh, give a heavy discount for a user if you. If you go through this verification, I will give you 20% or 30% discount. So try to remove these uh, complaints from, from users. So this has been actually used by the by our collaborative e-commerce uh, website, and they have used it all the time. It's, it's pretty effective. And this is some example. Uh, this is a number we add. We add in, in, in the description. This is number we add in the, in the description. Sometimes uh, normally the, the descriptor, sometimes it has a number like a zip code or something, but we add this unique number in the description for the card holder to tell back to the e-commerce. Uh, okay, uh, the, the last uh, topic I'm going to briefly introduce is uh, a voice, vo voice over IP system. Um, Again, it's based on networking, traffic monitoring, and the profiling attack. Because many business, uh, they have this automatic uh, custom service call. Like every business, uh, a medium scale or large scale business, they have this automatic uh, uh, phone service call. Um, they are, many of them use voice over IP to save money. And, uh, and also another feature for those uh, custom service automatic phone call is that they are pretty fixed. So if you call Walmart today or one month later, this, uh, this menu in that uh, phone service is almost the same. And, uh, and uh, before they, they change the menu, every, every voice played back to the consumer is exactly the same. And in addition, voice over IP traffic is also very regular. It's a constant video, constant packet stream. So every packet has fixed size. The time interval between two packets is always fixed. So it's a, it's a constant and size, constant uh, packet streaming. And uh, another feature attacker can use is that um, uh, most, most of voice over IP system uh, when they play back the voice, uh, it's not, uh, it, it will have interrupt. Like uh, when the voice has a break, 
like when I say a sentence, the sentence has two phrases. If there is a long pause between the two phrases, the voice over IP system will, will not transmit any packet in that pause. So basically, when there is no voice, there is no packet streaming playback. Uh, attacker can use that break, this uh, packet streaming break, to identify uh, the, the length for the phrase. Uh, uh, so when you speak the same sentence, if two speakers speak the same sentence and, it, uh, and if they pause at different location, then this packet uh, stream will also be different. So basically, many automatic voice over IP call do not transmit voice stream during the voice break. So that is a big indicator for attacker to find out the pattern. Um, our experiment showed that if attacker monitor this encrypted voice over IP traffic, they can figure out uh, which company has been called by this user, whether the user called a pharmaceutical company or whether the user called a Walmart. And uh, we can also figure out what option the customer has chosen. Uh, like uh, when you call Walmart, you have option one to go to pharmacy, option two, uh, go to tire service, option three, you go to another division. So attacker can figure out what uh, option the user have chosen in that automatic uh, custom service phone call. Um, and and this is ongoing, uh, is that uh, if a voice over IP play back what you have typed, like uh, when you say your social security number, if the voice over IP system play back the, your social security number, we can figure out what social security number you have typed in, what number you have typed in. Uh, this one is a little bit harder, but we are doing research on that one. So, and uh, this just showed the, uh, the phone call to this uh, to this uh, company, custom service phone call, based on the first two fragment, like the fragment is uh, basically when you transmit the voice uh, stream, there is a break. So so between break, there's so all the voice packet is called one fragment. We can see that so based on the first two fragment, we can visually tell that uh, which calls the to which company. So uh, we don't need to even to use machine learning algorithm. Just uh, based on the first two fragment, their 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 time delay, their difference, we can tell. So you can see uh, different company. They have very different uh, things. Even for these two company, their two first two fragment they look similar to each other. But when we zoom the, zoom in them, zoom in on these two packet, we can see that these two frame, uh, two fragment, their pattern is still different. Remember, this pattern is very constant, it's very fixed. Uh, so there are very little variation in this uh, time delay in this time interval. So uh, it's very easy to tell which company the user had called uh, based on this, just the first two, two frame. And uh, if a user choose different options, like uh, when the user call Walmart, if the user choose the uh, option one, if the user choose the option two, based on the following uh, playback voice from the company's uh, phone service, we can still figure out whether the user pressed, uh, pressed one, because if the user pressed one, this is the next three frame fragment. If the user pressed uh, two, this is the next uh, uh, two voice stream fragment. So we can figure out whether the user have chose the option one or you chose the option two. So, so that's the basic uh, finding we find for this uh, uh, privacy attack to the voice over IP to the automatic phone service. Okay, I think uh, time's up. So I, I, uh, that's all for my talk. So any questions? Thank you, uh, Dr. Cliff. Uh, Jameson, can you collect questions and see uh, while we wait for the question session? Thank you for the great presentation. Um, so what is your perspective of large language models um, being for 
network profiling or you know the type of applications that you've been working on how, what is your uh, take on that how would you see you know we keep on hearing or reading papers on llms training llms on new use cases so any thought process on how you would uh, how would you would uh, take on this uh yeah um uh in the in the research I have introduced here, we basically use a, a traditional machine learning, and they are good enough for this for this field. Uh, yeah, I think I use um, use deep learning, use uh, the large language model. Uh, we can get a better accuracy, like from the attacker's uh, perspective. So so basically, it means that it makes this. Uh, profiling attack and privacy attack even worse. Okay. Uh, Jameson, do you see any questions coming in? We have one from Dr. Oku. Um, Dr. Oku asks, what do you think about using AI systems for ensuring cybersecurity? I feel having AI systems with human in the loop would be a good choice. Well, uh, 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 I just attended the CAE uh, Cybersecurity Symposium uh, two weeks ago, and they have a big emphasis on AI in cybersecurity. They actually will have the new CAE accreditation on AI in cybersecurity, probably at the end of this year. So, so right now we have the CAE Cyber Defense Education, CAE Cyber Research, accreditation, but they will add AI in cybersecurity, a, a new accreditation later. So that should emphasize on the government, on the uh, on how, what's the implementation of the AI uh, in cybersecurity. Well, so two aspects, how do we use AI in cybersecurity to improve our cybersecurity defense and, and, uh, and detection. Uh, another issue is that uh, the the new challenge bring in by the AI, like a uh, attack to the AI system, um, like adversarial attacks, uh, uh, those kind of attack. How do we deal with those uh, those new challenge? Yeah, I, I don't have a good answer in that, but uh, um, it's two aspects when when we consider AI in cybersecurity. Okay, thank you. Um. I have a question on the IVR thing that you talked about. You know, how was your how robust your data set that you use for this IVR thing? And you um, mean you know, the voice over IP, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we uh, my my PhD student he actually purchased a used uh, this uh, this voice over IP uh, device and uh, connect to another computer in in Indonesia. So the actual the actual voice over IP traffic is uh, going from here to uh, from his uh, one of his computer to Indonesia, then transmit back to this uh, IVR device. So 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 you can see that the, the traffic is going through the whole world, but still the traffic has very fixed pattern. Um, the, the 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 time delay. Uh, this uh, time variation does not add much change uh, to the traffic pattern here. Okay, the time delay is uh, you're talking about delay in the network delay, or you're talking about yeah, what like the network delay. Network delay because uh, what uh, each fragment each each fragment here represent a series of words over IP packet. Each packet is very small. It has yeah. actually fixed size, and uh, and uh, packet of course packet to packet has this uh, inter uh, this uh, time delay, and when it transmits through this uh, whole world internet, it, it it will vary, but that variation is uh, very distinguishable between the break between uh, between the voice break, like when you say two sentence. The break between your two sentences may be 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. So it's very clear to see this break compared to the time difference between between a continuous uh, voice stream data. 
Great. Um, Jameson, do you have other questions coming up? Yep. Uh, one more. Uh, considering the features shown in, in the second slide are related to attack detection, can you share more insights on how you're utilizing length of packets as features in eaves eavesdropped encrypted Wi-Fi traffic? Oh, uh, here is that uh, uh, these are the features used in our machine learning, you know, like in a random forest machine learning. Like uh, we collected a uh, frame in a fixed time window, like a one minute time window. Then in that one minute time window, we collect how many frames, how many packets has been sent by that uh, MAC address, by that IoT device, how many packets has been received by that MAC, uh, 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 MAC address, uh, by that IoT device. And uh, this is number of different packet size because some IoT device, their packet size is very regular. They only have two or three different size of packet when they stand out. Some device, they have very diff very varied uh, packet size. They, they could have 10 or 20 different size uh, for, for, for their packet. So this is uh, uh, that feature. And uh, this uh, time-based feature is interval time. Uh, like uh, some IoT device, they send out a like a ping message very regularly, like a send one packet per 100 millisecond. Some device, they could send burst traffic, then idle for a long time, then send another burst of traffic. So those can also be used for this uh, interval time features uh, in this uh, future build up. Great. A um, couple of questions, you know, first is, you know, um... How do you see, you know, uh, the, what are the limitations of uh, this type of uh, research right now? And how do you see extending this work, what you have done and going after some uh, new opportunities? And what are the what are the limitations that you see in this uh, research? Uh, in this one, this is like a attack method. So we, we use this research to demonstrate that this is a real threat. For for Wi-Fi network for IoT uh, for I for IoT device, uh, this is not uh, uh, just a think that this is threat, but we have demonstrated that this is a real threat. Attacker can really figure out what device you are using. So um, how to so then basically the next question: How do we defend against it? Whether whether the industry want to defend against uh, these kind of Profiling attack or not, whether they think that uh, it's worth to to add additional defense mechanism in. But um, these are could be solutions embedded within the firewalls or or the routers. How do you see the end solution has been? Uh, uh, is the mitigation solution is 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 in, is uh, implemented? What what are those? Well, like uh, this defense method. Uh, this defense method requires IoT device to to do this change on their program mm. on, on the device program. Uh, it doesn't need to change the, the IoT device operating system, so that's a big change. But they just need to change their 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 application running on the IoT device. Uh, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. 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 So this uh, this uh, this defense method, we believe that it's uh, much easier to be actually deployed in the near future. Okay. But some right. other defense method, they may be harder uh, to be implemented. Okay. Um, I have an education related question. Do you at UCF? Mm -hmm. Do you have any cyber range? Do you have any? Do you provide any opportunities for students in your undergrad or graduate program, or have resources that you subscribe to some third party software to do the cyber range? Or how do you? How do you? Do you have anything on advice on that? Yeah. Uh, UCF. Uh, we we don't have a cyber range build up. Uh, well, we have a very good. Uh, uh, student club on the cyber cyber uh, cyber security uh, attack 
we have a collegiate cyber defense student club. They have achieved a lot of uh, award in the cyber competition. Uh, in, in their club activity, they will build a small scale uh, virtualization environment by themselves on, on, on their own computers. So, but we, but, uh, we don't have a fixed cyber range build belonging to the university. Okay. Uh, university of West Florida, they have a cyber range built up. And the University of South Florida, because of this uh, Cyber Florida, uh, funded by the by the Florida State, uh, mm -hmm. Cyber Florida built a big cyber range in in USF, and provided for all the state university in Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any other questions, Jamison, coming in? Um, there's one more. Are okay, there, go ahead. Are there any popular methods for to encode packet data? Is there any um, popular methods to encode packet data? To encode packet data? Um, I'm not sure what does it mean to encode the packet data. Uh, for, for this Wi-Fi device, uh, for the Wi-Fi attack, and for this uh, voice over IP attack, Attacker cannot see the content for the packet. The packet is already encrypted. Attacker don't have a way to decrypt the packet. OK, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Cliff. I think that uh, concludes our webinar. I appreciate your time. I think uh, uh, your effort is uh, you know, greatly appreciated. You will receive a nice uh, plaque from UND and a uh, oh. certificate from uh, our dean. I think I look forward to you know working with you as we as we extend our uh, network and collaboration. I appreciate so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Yeah. yeah thank you. Forward. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.